Hey everyone, Nubkex here and welcome back to episode 2 of my Essential Skills Tutorials for Heroes of the Storm. Um, in today's episode, we're going to be looking at an external site called Hotslogs, which is really going to help you improve your gameplay. I also want to give a big shout out to everyone who gave feedback on the first tutorial. They said they wanted less chatter at the start and uh, just you know, shorter, simpler tutorials on how to do things. So I'll be trying to do that for you today. Okay, so what is Hotslogs and how is it so good? Well, you can head over to it anytime. It's www hotslogs.com and this is the basic page you're going to see so let's take a quick look at this what this says it shows you every hero the num uh, amount of times they've been played in games the amount of times they've been banned how much uh, how many games what percentage of the games they've been played in and then very intriguingly what their win percentage is and how that has gone up or gone down uh recently this is by default this is the hero statistics over the last seven days people playing in Hero League, so ranked gameplay uh, with Hero Level 5 Plus. This uh, was last updated 25 minutes ago, so it's very recent uh, information. It's across all skill levels, so we'll look into how to, to narrow that down to different skill levels soon. Um, but like, for example, we can see just glancing at this, we can see overall Kel'Thuz, for example, is extremely powerful right now. He's got a 54%, 54.5% .5 win rate. Uh, he's been picked in 71% of the games. He's also been banned a huge amount. Uh, and very interestingly, we can see his win rate has actually gone up 9.7% in the last seven days as opposed to what it was before. So before that, he was sitting at, what, about a 45% win rate? He has, with the last patch, obviously, just shot up almost 9.7%, which is an absolutely massive deal. Uh, so we can see, like, the Lost Vikings, Nazebo, Kelthus, all these heroes are extremely strong. Uh, if we scroll down phew, right to the bottom, we can see, for example, that Tyrael, Rexar, Arthas, Kerrigan, Abathur, Zeratul uh, are all considered very weak. However, that being said, this is very broad information, and we can narrow it down a bit more. If we click on a additional filters available, we pop into something a bit more customizable. So we're going to look at these top two drop down menus. The first one on the left, I like to go in here and you can click uh, this last seven days and then in brackets, uh, current build or parentheses if you're in the States, I think. Um, so if we do this, this will uh, filter it to only the last patch. So this is very useful if, for example, let's say four days ago, they brought out a new big patch. Well, you know, I want to search it only for things in that patch because things might have changed dramatically. For example, now that we're searching for only the last seven days, we can see Kel, this is now, he's gone up 10.6%. Uh, another one that would stand out to me, uh, well, let me see, can I find him? Dun, 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 dun. I've obviously scrolled past him. I'd say he's fairly high, high-ish on the win rates. Ah, oh, I can't find him. Let's do like a, no, there he is, Tychus. Okay, so Tychus is actually lower than I thought he would be, but we can see Tychus has shot up 5.4% in the win rates. Uh, I think that was due to some buffs and also there was a bug where uh, his grenades were doing extra damage. So I think that has been patched uh, at the time of recording this video. Another thing you can do, which is extremely useful, is to filter this by league. You can see there's master, diamond, platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. Well, what do these things mean? If you're just playing Heroes of the Storm, you probably have no idea. These things are kind of created by hot slogs and it's a way to rank different players. So for example, if we pop over here, there's a site called www.heroesplaybook.com and uh, the link is, you know, Know, forward slash question mark p equals 136 and um, this is a great little story they posted uh, just last year which was how uh, mmor is distributed now your mmor is going to be how uh, you're rated as a player whenever you win a game you gain more whenever you lose you lose more so here we can see this is a histogram of hot slogs mmor um, and it shows you how many people are in each range so this here is the bronze range we've got the silver Gold, Platinum, Diamond, and then Master down here. So we can see there's very, very few people in Master, uh, whereas there's like a lot of people in Silver, lots of people in Gold, uh, lots of people kind of at the top end of Bronze, and then going down. It's basically distributed in a bell curve. This might illustrate it a little bit better. This is uh, it by pie chart. So for example, it does it for both Quick Match and Ranked. Uh, and you can see again bronze is a big chunk of players then silver gold and platinum are all big chunks of players diamond is a bit smaller than that and then master is a lot smaller than that again so basically the higher up we go the the better the skill levels become uh one thing i like to do master league is very small i think for example if we go to the the hero league leaderboard and this is for eu uh we can see that there's Okay, there's only just under 1,000 players uh, in Master League. So, you know, that's a fairly small amount of people. Um, and sometimes what you can find is that there there might not be enough information to get 
like good details on the heroes if they haven't played enough games. So what I like to do is to search for both Master and Diamond. Generally speaking, players at Diamond level will be using the same sort of builds and heroes that players at Master level will, and oftentimes Master and Diamond players will be mixed together in uh, through the matchmaker anyway. Um, so for example, if we search for these two levels, we can see this is quite a staggering. The Lost Vikings actually have a 65.7% win rate, though of course that's only, even searching for both Master and Diamond in the current build, that's only 35 games. Uh, Tracer has actually at this particular level a 61.1% win rate, so she's clearly an extremely dominant hero at the top levels of play, uh, and so on. We can come down and see again Arthas, Leoric, and, and so on. I, I thought that's kind of funny. Gaul actually has a worse win rate than Cho. Uh, so that's kind of uh, intriguing. <laughs> I'm not sure how that works, I guess, just in terms of, I, I don't know, that's kind of weird. If someone knows, they can explain. And this rough overview can be helpful. Now, what you might want to do is, if you find out, and we'll come to how to find out in a second, but when you find out which sort of, uh, you know, which bracket you fall into here, what you could do is go, instead of searching for Master and Diamond, let's say you're in Silver, well, let's search for Silver. Let's see how things change up. And okay, at the Silver League, we can see that uh, uh, Cho and Gal are a much higher win rate. Nazebo and Kael'thas are still way up there. The Lost Vikings, though, have fallen down a little bit, though they're still extremely good. We can see Heroes like a new barack murky uh have kind of come up higher tracer look at that she's fallen down to only well quote unquote only 53 percent. so she's still really good but nowhere near as dominant as she is at the top levels of play because i i figured because she's a difficult hero to play uh one thing i think is interesting is tassadar who was very high up is only sitting at 49.2 percent and in fact he has a 4.5 percent uh he's gone up 4.5 percent so before that he was even lower and he hasn't been changed in the past, so he's perhaps a hero who's not super great if you're playing in Silver League, that Silver League players will struggle to get the most out of him. Okay, so one final point before I jump in and show you the details on the specific heroes and their talents is uh, quite interesting. You can search heroes by the number of games they've been played in. You can also search them by the number of times they've been banned. And I think, like for example, you can see here, uh, quite interesting that heroes that are banned a lot, Li Ming, Illidan, they actually have quite low win rates, all things considered, whereas other heroes who are banned a lot, like Tracer and Kael'thas, are actually have very high win rates. So that's something you can do if you want to improve your Hero League games. It's something I've been trying to do in my Hero League series, is to, you know, move away a bit from those heroes that people think are strong. With this, you can actually search and see which heroes are actually strong. Uh, so, for example, you could say, well, Li Ming, everyone bans Li Ming. I can actually get a bit of an advantage for myself because, hey, look, she doesn't actually do that well. Uh, let's say, for example, I'm in Gold League. Let, let's take a look and, and see there. So, again, Li Ming, the most banned hero for gold level players. However, when she does get picked, she only has a 45.9% win rate. You know, she's doing really badly. I guess I won't ban her away. Illidan, the second most banned, only has a 46.2% win rate. Well, you know what? I don't think I'll ban those heroes anymore. I'm going to devote my bans to, you know, Lieutenant Morales or, or Tracer. Or, you know what? Let's uh, let's ban out Kael'thas. Let's let's look uh, at some of these top win rate heroes. Maybe the Lost Vikings are murky. They're, they're a bit more uncommon. Let's see Kael'thas has played 700 games, whereas these guys are only played like 40 and 78. So, well, you know what? Let's focus. Let's, let's ban out Kael'thas. Maybe let's ban out Johanna. How about Nazebo or Diablo? These heroes, Tracer, that are doing really well and are played quite frequently. You know what? I'm going to ban those out if I'm playing at goal level instead of... Uh, these heroes that people think are strong but actually aren't. So that's a really good way you can use the site. Okay, now here we are in the hero details for Kael'thas, and this is another super useful page. What this does is it shows you, again, let's switch this to the current build, uh, and what, what this does, it shows you how often each talent is picked and what the win rate for each talent is. So this can give you a really good insight into to what's good for a hero. You know, the first time you pick him up, you don't have a clue how to build him uh, or what what's good. You can come over here and see uh, exactly what to pick. I chose Kel'thas in particular here because I feel like he's a hero that has a lot of variety with his talents. A lot of his talents can be uh, quite strong. So for example, we can see at level one, um, you know, Felon Fusion is the most picked at 57%, but the other ones are picked quite a lot as well. And Felon Fusion has a 56.7% win rate, uh, whereas Mana Addict and Convection both have good win rates as well. So they're not terrible. Again, at level 4, we can see the win rates all pretty reasonable and the pick rates fairly reasonable. At level 7, even more divided, almost, you know, a third each way in terms of them being picked. And they're all, they all have uh, great win rates once again. Both Heroics are really good uh, and so on. Uh, one thing I'd say to uh, bear in mind when you're looking at this page in particular, 
particular is to be careful of the level 20 talents uh, because this obviously includes games you know it can happen quite frequently let me get rid of that um, where one team hits level 20 and wins the game before the other team even hits level 20 so that's why the level 20 win rates are so high it's because you know it counts some losses they never hit level 20 but then wins obviously will hit level 20 a bit more. So that's why they're a bit higher. You can also look down here. It shows you, you know, the most popular talent builds. Um, there's some bugs here with the icons. I'm not sure why that is. So you know what? Let's knock it back to just um, just regular and let's take a look. Okay, it's still bugged out in Keltus. I'm not sure what's going on right there. Well, we'll check out another here after that. But yeah, you can see all the different things. Now, this is a really good point for looking at the Master and the Diamond players, because obviously these players, more experienced, they're going to have a better idea of what's actually strong in terms of talents. So, you know what? You know, you can be a bit flexible in terms of what heroes, some heroes just function better at lower uh, ranks than others. So I'd be a bit more careful in terms of picking heroes, but when you're picking talents, Going for a Master and Diamond talent picks are often the best thing to do. And you can see here again, um, for example, at level 1, Fell Infusion is doing way better than the other ones. So that might be something you can look into as well. Fell Infusion quite possibly is by far the best one here at level 1 to pick up. And then, you know, at the other levels, there's much more variety. Let's pick a, let's get a hero that has very poor talent variety. Let's see, Zagara. So Zagara's got terrible talent variety. So, okay, like, look right here, we can see that for Master and Diamond players, uh, for Zagara, uh, level 1 reconstitution has been picked 93% of the time. It has a 55% win rate. And Corpse Feeders has been picked 3% of the time. It also has a very good win rate, but you know that's it's hard to say because it's been picked so uh, infrequently, but it seems to be pretty good. Uh, here we can see, again, level 4 and Venom Spines, 93.8% win rate, which is crazy, uh, or pick rate, which is crazy. Um, you can see some of these other talents have barely been picked at all. The Tumor Clutch also has a good win rate and it's been picked a little bit. So, you know, maybe that is something you could look into. Um, we can see down here, again, like other, other talents doing well. At level 7 is quite a good variety, actually, here. If you look, you know, Endless Creep picked quite a bit, very strong. Rapid Incubation picked the most, actually, in this particular tier. Also very strong, as is Battle Momentum. So that's quite a, a, a varied tier. So that's good to see. Both Heroics doing quite well in win percentage, though uh, Nidus Network only being picked in 4% of the games, with Devaring more being picked 96%. Um, and then uh, there's no... Uh, no popular talent builds. I wonder why that is. That's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. Normally, normally it does show them. Okay, so for example, if we search all leagues, we can see your most popular talent build is Reconstitution into Venom Spines, Rapid Incubation, Devouring Maw, um, then Mutalisk, then uh, Brood Expansion, and Bolt of the Storm. So that's your most popular talent builds. I'm not sure why these are displaying so, so strangely. Normally they don't. I'm not sure why that is. Oh well. Okay, so one other thing I want to show you is your profile. So you can sign in, I think, with your Battle.net account. You can also download um, an automatic uploader application. So here's the automatic uploader. It just uploads your replay files to the sites. Uh, no one else can see them unless you share them. So, you know, don't worry about that. Uh, it just helps flesh out your profile and fill in all the details. And you'll see, you know, when you successfully upload a game, it'll say success. Uh, if someone else has already uploaded it, it will say duplicate. Uh, also, if we come down here, yeah, if you play like a co-op versus an AI game, it will say computer player found and it won't include that. Um, so that's how you upload those. I recommend the, uh, the automatic uploader. It's just fantastic. And then if you go over to your profile, this is what get, will get filled out by you uploading your replays. You'll probably have, if you search for your profile, you'll probably find yourself because, again, there's 10 people in every game. If only one person uses the application, it obviously fills in all those details for all the other nine players in the game as well. Uh, so it will show you your your writing, your MMR, and your league for quick match. Also for hero league, it shows you how uh, you combine hero levels, how many games you played, how long you spend playing the game uh, over here is pretty interesting and down here you can see for example uh, for warriors I've played 179 games have 58% win rate uh, assassin supports specialists it breaks these down even further for example burst damage support bruiser and so on and so forth which can be pretty you know pretty useful it tells you different things like burst damage is the mages like Jaina Kelthus and Li Ming so I know that I'm, I'm particularly good at those heroes whereas sustained damage heroes I'm not quite as good at those I prefer playing burst ones out there the ones I have more success with. If we scroll down here, you can see all your hero statistics. So we can sort it by hero level, by name, by games played, by your win percentage. So you can see like, okay, for example, Jaina, she is like one of my most played heroes and I have a 62% win rate with her. So I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you can see someone you're doing, you're bad at. So for example, Artanis and Abather and Rainer, I'm actually terrible at, or not so terrible. It also depends somewhat on, you know, other things and low games as well can be somewhat misleading. But I know, for example, 
that, uh, let's say, Artanis, I know I'm actually pretty decent at Artanis, but he was just, when I played a lot of games with him, that was when he first came out, so I didn't know how to build him, didn't know how to play him. It was day one making those guides, so I ended up losing a bunch of games. So I know, well, okay, that's a little bit misleading. For example, if we go and look at the talents, we can see some stuff. For example, if I go into the talents here, when I worked out that Zealot Charge was actually like the best talent at the time, it's been changed in the last patch, though it's not as essential anymore. You can see that Jay jumped up to a 57% win rate when I was choosing that talent. So, you know, that kind of gives some information as to what's actually working pretty well. Uh, he's a late game hero. Now, for example, I know Nova. I'm bad at Nova, so let's just steer away from her as much as possible and try maybe focus in on the heroes I'm better at when I do go and play in uh, Hero League. If we take a look at Jaina, say my most played hero, we can find out some you know fun little information, some fun stats in terms of talents. So I can see that you know there's going to be some places where I'm actually going wrong. For example, if we look here at level seven, we can see you know I've actually chosen a lot of different things here: 19 games with Frostbitten, 23 with Frost Armor, 14 with Ice Lance. You can see Frost Armor is my most picked one, but I only have a 52.2% win rate with that, whereas I've got 68% with Frostbitten and 71% with Ice Lance. So, you know, having played whatever, almost 60 games with Jaina, I can come back and look at these stats and say, hey, hang on, I thought Frost Armor was doing really good. In fact, it's actually not doing that good. I'd be much better off probably picking one of these other talents because I'm having much better success with those. Same down here at level 16, Northern Exposure is generally considered to be the best. It makes enemies vulnerable when you hit them with Cone of Cold, uh, but Numbing Blast, Cone of Cold, Rooting Chill targets for a second. You can see I've chosen them a roughly equal number of games, but I've had far more success with Numbing Blast. So generally speaking, I'm going to gravitate more towards Numbing Blast. That obviously fits much better with how I play the game. And I have a lot of success with that. So even though Northern Exposure might be considered to be, you know, the quote unquote, the best thing in general for Janus, uh, I personally am going to try play probably more with Numbing Blast because that just suits me more. There's other nice info here. You can see your win rates on different maps. Goddamn haunted mines. Goddamn haunted mines. You can see your win rates versus other heroes, your heroes you're good against. Uh, also heroes you're bad against. Wow, Cho'Gall. That's interesting. I'm really bad against Cho'Gall, apparently. Lunara, Greymane. Okay, so some of the newer heroes coming back to the game and not knowing how to deal with them. It's probably a lot of those things right there. And then heroes, you know, you're moderately good against. It's not super useful, but, you know, it's somewhat useful. You can see your MMR milestones. Um, so that was my, I've only started ranked games, but like saying quick match, you'll look something like this going kind of up and down, up and down. And it shows you just over time, you know, how you're doing and where you're going. And you can also see your win rate by game time, which is funny. You can see, you know, how you do playing with your friends and what their rating is. You can see how you're doing against rivals. So for example, if I see this guy Spanky, um, I've played six games against him. I've won one and lost five. So if I see that guy, I better start crying and run away as quickly as possible because I don't want to play against him. Okay, guys, so that is Hotslogs. It's a great little site. Tons of information that will help you improve your game and get a better understanding for what other players are trying in the game as well. Uh, give the video a like if you learned something new or you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to see more stuff, I'll be continuing this series. We're going to be looking at, again, external things like Hotslogs or talking about the meta or drafting heroes. And we'll also look at, you know, Know, things you can do in the game. I've got two episodes so far. This is the second one. In the first episode, I looked at an in-game skill called stutter stepping, which is like a little movement uh, tips for your character. So that could be helpful as well. Um, I also have a series called Road to Ranked One, where I'm playing through my ranked placement games and, you know, analyzing, talking about the draft and the heroes and what's working, what's not working. So you might enjoy that too. And, and I do fun games too, just all the time, trying out different things. So do subscribe if you want to see more of those things. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.